Trump Speaks to Reporters in the Oval Office by Tom Brenner, The New York Times, Redix After the pummeling he incurred during the 35-day shutdown, a self-inflicted punishment, Donald Trump was looking forward to his State of the Union address, seeing it as a presidential safe space where at least some of the attendees had to applaud for him. He was in a great mood and really seemed ready to go, a Republican who spoke with Trump before the speech told me. The generally positive response from his favorite outlets, Drudge's headline blared, Trump rocks house, has pleased the president this week, sources said. He's been in a good mood, another prominent Republican said. And the no-socialism themes were seen as a potent weapon against Democrats in 2020, the first hopeful sign in a while. But while the State of the Union adjusted the president's mood, it wasn't enough to realign the underlying dysfunction of the West Wing. Morale inside the White House, never high to begin with, has turned particularly bleak, according to interviews with 10 former West Wing officials and Republicans close to the president. The issue is that many see Trump himself as the problem. Trump is hated by everyone inside the White House, a former West Wing official told me. His shambolic management style, paranoia, and pattern of blaming staff for problems of his own making have left senior White House officials burned out and resentful, sources said. It's total misery. People feel trapped, a former official said. Trump always needs someone to blame, a second former official said. Sources said the leak of Trump's private schedules to Axios, which revealed how little work Trump actually does, was a signal of how disaffected his staff has become. White House Communications Director Bill Shine has told friends he's angry that Trump has singled him out for the bad press during the government shutdown. Bill is like, you're the guy who steps on the message more than anyone, said a Republican who's spoken with Shine recently. Economic advisor Larry Kudlow has told people he's probably got six months left. Larry's really tired of it all, a source close to Kudlow said. What's driving a lot of the frustration is that Trump, now more than ever, runs the West Wing as a family business. Four sources said the only White House advisors he truly consults are daughter Ivanka and son-in-law Jared Kushner. This is a family affair, and if you're not in the family, you've got problems, a former official said. The special privileges and access afforded to Kushner and Ivanka have been alienating Trump's acting chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney. Mick is not entirely thrilled with the family, a Republican close to Mulvaney told me. Multiple sources said Mulvaney is looking for a way out of the West Wing. He's said to be interested in a cabinet position, either at the Commerce Department or Treasury, and he's reportedly been pursuing the University of South Carolina presidency. A senior White House official recently lobbied a friend of Mulvaney's to convince Mulvaney to stay. In the meantime, Mulvaney is working to stave off another political crisis before Trump either shuts the government down again or declares a state of emergency to fund his southern border wall. A source briefed on the internal debate said that Mulvaney is advising Trump to accept less than his demand of $5 billion and make up the difference by shuffling money around the existing budget. Mick wants to reprogram existing funds, the source said. Trump has insisted he won't compromise, but he faces no good options with a GOP. Revolt likely if he goes the national emergency route. Trump is going to declare whatever happens a victory, a former West Wing official said. The White House declined to comment. More great stories from Vanity Fair, the leaking, gossiping, and infighting that made Kellyanne Conway a formidable White House player, why old news habits must die, so that real journalism can live. Nancy Pelosi is America's most powerful power suit boss, is Kamala Harris the 2020 candidate to beat, your passport to Vanity Fair's 25th Hollywood issue with Sir Ronan, Timothy Chalamet, Chadwick Boseman, and more looking for more? Sign up for our Daily Hive newsletter and never miss a story.